Do you believe in the power of prayer? Join me this week for Torah for Today. Shalom, everyone. This is Mike Sutcliffe, one of the pastors here at Corner Fringe Ministries. I want to thank you for joining me again this week for our weekly Torah for Today. This is our way of preparing our hearts and minds for the Sabbath. This is a preparation day, and so one of the ways we do that is just getting together and doing these short little videos about topical matters that people seem to be looking for. To give you an idea, this, this one this week is about prayer. And the reason this came up is because I was doing a little research into the Corner Fringe Ministries YouTube channel and uh, looking at what were some of the search things or search questions or queries that uh, our users, our, our subscribers might be looking at that in, in relationship to Corner Fringe Ministries. And I was surprised to find out that the, here's the top 12, daily effective prayer and repentance. Healing scriptures for YouTube are for on YouTube. Daily effective prayer against witchcraft. Prayer for restoration and breakthrough. Prayer for God to answer my prayers. Signs God is preparing you for a breakthrough. Prayer for job and financial breakthrough. Daily effective prayer. Signs your breakthrough is near. Daily prayers for healing of body, mind, and soul. Preaching on healing and miracles and five signs your breakthrough is around the corner. Well, I think they're all connected. I think that if you're looking for that breakthrough, the best place that you can begin is in prayer. So today I want to talk to you a little bit about what is prayer and how it relates to why you and I should be more passionate about prayer. I want to begin by letting you know that the Hebrew word is tefillah. And this conveys a message here. It's a, it conveys the idea of judging evaluating, and interceding. Now, but it's more than that, right? Prayer is, it's making a request, or it's its even more than uh, expressing gratitude. It's, uh, in the best definition I think I've, I learned was, it is seeking God's mind on a matter. I think that's the simplest way to put it. So when I go into a time of prayer, I literally am seeking the will of God. I want to know what his position is on a matter. It's not so much about what I believe or, or anything of that matter. I'm seeking his will. And I think that's really interesting because there are, you know, if you go, just go to Amazon today and look up prayer, you're going to find that there are millions upon millions of books written about this subject matter. And they're all very good and very powerful and very, very important. But what I want to just point out one aspect of prayer that I haven't read too much about is that prayer is about God. It's about seeking God. It's about seeking his will. In fact, everything that I study these days, I mean, it doesn't matter if I'm reading Amos or 1 Corinthians, everything is about God. He is the center, the foundation, and the purpose of everything that we do. And so it would, it would also make sense then that our prayer should be focused on him. So I think it's really important that we seek alignment with God's will, that we understand that prayer is a two-way communication with God, the creator of heavens and earth, the El Shaddai, the God Almighty, and that it is, uh, it is both something that we can do privately and corporately within our communities. Prayer is such a powerful thing that it's amazing that we don't understand the privilege of prayer because I often uh, am reminded that there, there was a price paid so that I could go into prayer and the Lord would hear me. I was telling somebody the other day, um, one of the most beautiful uh, examples I've ever seen. When I first became a Christian and we were going to a different church, I remember going to the, the prayer evening with, with some of the elder pe other people in the, in the church. And there was one woman in particular. And every time she prayed, it was like she was leaning up and whispering into her father's ear. It was the most beautiful thing I had ever seen. And every week I would just go to, to watch her pray because there was an intimacy that took place there. There was this confidence and hope and there was this, this give and take in that conversation that she was having with our God. And I wanted so desperately to have that same ability. You know, in the Hebrew culture, uh, prayer plays a huge part of our of the lives of, of many of the early Hebrews and even today. They would do a morning or and an afternoon and an evening prayer. And I learned that that these prayers were significant because they 
related or connected to the patriarchs, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And what that should tell us uh, then outwardly and simply put is that each of those men, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, they remind us of the covenant promises that God made to his people. So if we're going to pray morning, evening, and, and morning, afternoon, and evening, and we're going to think of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, then prayer automatically should move our heart into God's promises, his covenant to be with us. I think that's really powerful because we see that um, th this is a constant reminder of how God provides for people and how he is a part of every aspect of our lives. You know, I'm guilty. If, if anything else, I'm guilty of not having the most vibrant, passionate prayer life out there. It's available all the time, but I don't pray often enough. My wife and I will get up in the morning and we'll take walks and we do prayer walks. And it's, it's a great opportunity for us to, to be together, uh, for me to pray over her and her to pray over me, for us to pray over our children and our finances and, and the community here in, in Dixon. And for each individual, we pray for elected officials, we pray for the homeless, we pray for the school and the first responders. Prayer in that aspect is, is a powerful time. Well, and then throughout the day, I go about my business and, and I don't stop and pray often enough. I, I may pray for a blessing over our food, but I don't pray every minute of every day. And I think that I'm missing an opportunity to grow closer to the Lord because of that. You know, there were prayers that were special prayers for like the Sabbath and, and for the feasts. And each of these had a, a very unique celebration. And so there were special prayers that were mixed over that. They were prayers were part of life events and personal devotion and communities. So that you see a lot of prayer taking place in the synagogue. But you also see it taking place in, the, in your closet. You know, Abraham interceded in prayer. When you look at Genesis chapter 18, verses 22 through 33. Moses prayed for Israel in Exodus chapter 32. And David, if you just read his Psalms, they're one prayer after another. Prayer is a huge position in God's world. And so this is important for us to understand why and how we pray. And I think that as a, as a body of believers, we're missing an opportunity. So let's look at a couple of reasons why we pray. All right? Scripture tells us that we should be, uh, we can pray for, uh, like, repentance and self-reflection and alignment with God. This is about maintaining a right relationship with God, fostering spiritual growth, and receiving forgiveness. All you got to do is read 1 John chapter 1, verse 9, that says, If we confess our sins, He is faithful and righteous to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. We can pray for healing regarding physical, emotional, and spiritual well-being. Praying for healing acknowledges God's power to restore health and comfort. And it invites his intervention in our physical and emotional struggles. Look at James 5, 14 and 15. It says, Is anyone among you sick? Then he must call for the elders of the church, and they are to pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer offered in faith will restore the one who is sick, and the Lord will raise him up. And if he has committed sins, they will be forgiven him. We can pray for... Uh, protection against negative influences. And we can seek God's will and his protection through prayer. Helps to guard us against harmful spiritual influences and reinforces our reliance on God's power over any form of evil. God is our protector. He is our shield, our strong tower. He is our fortress. So when we go to him, he is capable, able, and willing to shelter us, protect us. And so we should seek him in all those aspects. Look at like 2 Thessalonians 3, 3 that says, The Lord is faithful and he will strengthen and protect you from the evil one. We are indeed in a spiritual attack. If you're a believer in Messiah, I promise you, everything that's going wrong in your life is either because of disobedience or because you're under spiritual attack. So we need to obey God. And then when we're under the attack, we need to be seeking God always. All right. What about overcoming challenges and obstacles. We're all facing those on a daily basis. So praying for overcoming and breakthroughs, is, is this is a sign of our trust in God's ability to provide solutions, especially in difficult situations. So they can be personal, professional, or spiritual. They can, they can be a part of who we are every minute of the day. Look at Jeremiah 29, verse 11. It says, For I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans for the welfare 
and not for calamity, to give you a future and a hope. You know, we can indeed pray for guidance and success in personal and professional lives. Our job-related issues are matters that are important to God. And when we acknowledge God's sovereignty, even in our workplace, in all areas of our life, including our careers and professional places, this gives glory to God. It reminds us that we, God is not somebody that we just meet in, in church when we attend. He's not somebody that we think about just in a crisis. He's literally the person that when we go into work, we serve. Proverbs 16 says this, Commit your works to the Lord, and your plans will be established. Can we pray for provision and, and, and stewardship? Absolutely. Praying for our finances invites God's wisdom in how we manage our resources and reflects our reliance on him. And this is a way for us to look to him and his guidance for provision and in any and all financial decisions. Look at Philippians chapter 4, verse 19. And my God will supply all your needs according to his riches in glory in Christ Jesus. You know, friends, for me personally, prayer is probably the most important aspect of my faith in one particular way. You see, the day that I gave my life to Messiah, a man came to me. I was, I was a heathen beyond heathen. I was the most sinful sinner I've ever met in my entire life. And I was in the workplace and I was crude and I was foul mouthed and I was angry and people were fearful of me. And this one man, his name's Eddie, prayed for me. He said to me, he pulled me aside and he said, Mike, I am praying for you. Now, I didn't want those prayers. I didn't receive those prayers, but I couldn't prevent those prayers either. And 24 hours later, I was a Christian. I found myself on my, I found myself on my knees at the foot of the cross. Eddie's prayers, the prayers of a righteous man were heard on my behalf. And a day later, I found myself with eternal salvation. Prayer is so important. So as we conclude today, I want you to just think about how important is prayer in your life. Do you take it for granted? Do you just kind of think about it when it when you need something? Do you do you give gratitude when it's when it's time to give gratitude? Do we we go to God when we have questions about finances, our marriage problems? How do we make decisions? Prayer is a and is an opportunity for us to commune with God. So today, I want to extend an invitation to you to join each of us to join us each Shabbat. At, at 11 o'clock Central Time, here on the Corner Fringe YouTube channel, we do our live stream worship service. And then at the conclusion of that live stream service, what we've been incorporating lately is pretty powerful. It's pretty beautiful. It's a time where our community online will share prayer requests, praises, and petitions. We'll intercede for other people. We'll bring our decisions and questions to the Lord. And we have figured out a way where I can go live stream and pray with you during this time. This is a beautiful way for us to uplift one another, to encourage one another, and to experience the power of prayer together. So whether you're seeking guidance, healing, a breakthrough, or you simply wish to strengthen your prayer life, this live stream is for you. And so I hope that it's a space that we can share our burdens, we can celebrate our victories, and we can pray for one another in a supportive and caring community. So please do me a favor, plan to join us each Shabbat on the Corner Fringe YouTube channel, and we can be a community that prays with and for one another. Friends, as we close out here today, I wanna to remind you of my the, the one part of prayer that, that I hear over and over again. It's the intercessory prayer. This is the prayer where you and I, as God's chosen righteous children, who have placed our trust in the blood of Messiah, and because and through him, we get to call Yahweh our Father. He wants to hear our prayers for the people who need to be prayed for. Our lost loved ones, our, our runaway spouses, our ter all the terrible things going on in the world today, praying for the peace in Israel. We're praying for salvation for everybody who's lost. You and I, we have a privilege and a responsibility to be in prayer for this community and this world. Please don't neglect this opportunity. This is a privilege of a lifetime for you and I to whisper into the ears of our Father who waits to hear us, ask Him, and seek His mind on every matter in our lives. 
friends, thank you for joining me this week. I hope that you are prepared for the Sabbath, that you put in your labor this week, and that you are ready to go into this rest and just enjoy your Sabbath rest with our Father. One of the things that I'd encourage you with as we go out today is that Daniel Joseph likes to say often, and it's one of my favorite quotes, the Lord inhabits our praise. May you enter into this week's Sabbath with praise on your lips. Until next week, everyone. Shalom.